Thank you, Astrid. <coughs> uh, yeah. Hello, everyone. My name is Timo Arnio. I'm from the National Land Survey of Finland. And today, maybe I represent more the Oscaric community. Thanks for coming here. Hello, also, people of the internet, online viewers. And let's get uh, started. I, I'm going to present the thematic mapping part of Oscar mostly, or that's the plan at least. And I also have some other content on my slides, Oscar basics, and also where to get Oscar. As mentioned, I'm from the National Land Survey, so I'm not here actually to sell anything, but I will mention a couple of companies who might also sell you something. Oh, let's get going then. <clears throat> and just a quick note. Uh, this is not a technical presentation, so if you're a technical person, I'm sorry, you're late. That presentation was already by our lead developer, Sami. Uh, but just kidding, you can still see the slides of Sami and see what we have actually done on the technical side uh, during the last year or so. Uh, we also had a workshop uh, on Monday afternoon, and that kind of material is available online, so you can go through that as well. That's also a kind of non-technical workshop, so that should be also for those who are not developers. Uh, boom. That's our logo. Nice and big. And this is an, kind of an old slide. Uh, Oscar in a nutshell that I always use when I uh, explain Oscar to people. I'm not very happy with this slide, so I made a new one today but I'm not quite happy with that either, so I'm going to show you this now and then the next one, you'll see. <coughs> so Oscari is a tool for easily building multi-purpose web mapping applications utilizing distributed spatial data infrastructures. Ooh, quite a sentence. Uh, you can also create embedded maps and put them on your website. I'm going to show maybe something of that as well. You can set up geo portals, WebGIS systems, etc., etc. Uh, open source, of course, we're here. Um, multilingual, we have fully covered three languages, English, Finnish and Swedish, and some 15 languages, European languages mostly, uh, in addition, also some other uh, indigenous languages or something like that. So that's Oscar in a nutshell. And this is the new slides. Uh, <coughs> new slide. I'm not a big fan of any of these words, so library, geoportal tool, framework, platform, yada yada. But you can think of Oscari like all of these products. And Astrid, I'm sorry, I don't have <laughs> your, your map vendor here next time. Maybe I will, I will add that. But you are all pretty much familiar with these products, and Oscari is quite similar. Uh, what makes Oscari a bit different than what separates us from these technologies? Uh, the kind of strong aspect of SDI integration, so special data infrastructures, you don't actually dump your data into Oscari, but you have it already online by different agencies, government uh, organizations, etc. So you don't have to kind of have the data with you. You can just connect to different interfaces, mostly OGC, you know, uh, WFS, WMS, WMTS, uh, all of those, <laughs> the basics. Uh, in addition to that, we support something more. So we support uh, Mapbox vector tiles. Uh, we support statistical APIs that will be in the thematic maps part more and uh, web map service with the time dimension. I think I have a slide on that as well. Uh, we also support the draft version of the new uh, web feature service 3 uh, with the new name OGC API features. Maybe there's some work to be done with that as well, but uh, still, but we already support it. We can already show the features and the featured attribute data. Um, embedded maps already mentioned there, and RPC API. The workshop was on the RPC API, so check the workshop if you want to know more about that. And some other things coming up next. Uh, I don't know if you had a rough night last night, but uh, this is about web coverage service. <coughs> so we support web coverage service like this. You can draw a line and you get a nice terrain height profile and interact with the map. And behind there is a web coverage service with, and a little bit of magic in between. Uh, 
we support 3D. Actually, that's not in production yet, but will be this year. So this is Helsinki and uh, some buildings from Helsinki. You can adjust the, uh, the portrayal or the, or the style, and you can play with it based on cesium or OL cesium for those uh, that matters. And projections. Many of, or actually, I think Oscar is the only one that I know that supports multiple projections and on changing the projections on the fly. So you can do this. You change the projection and boom, it changes. And this is very important, <coughs> especially now. Now maybe because um, I, I chose Greenland here for a reason. If you have a, let's say, web mercator and you might get the wrong impression that Greenland is big and all that. And <laughs> if you <laughs> have a proper projection, maybe you will, you know, you get the point. Uh, next up, or last but not least, <coughs> we have a mascot. <laughs> this is Oscar the Otter. You can take a picture with Oscar the Otter and tweet it out with a nice hashtag. Uh, come and meet me and, and, and do that after the presentation, if you like. And next up is the support services or companies I mentioned. So, <coughs> Oscar is kind of developed by a community. We have some 40 organizations like public sector, private sector. I'm from the National Land Survey. We are maintaining Oscar and the first developers, core developers. Uh, then there is Gispo, Sitovice, and Ubigo. I don't know how to pronounce the last one, but something like that. Uh, Gispo provides training, uh, coordination, etc. Sitovice provides, I think, uh, development, hosting, etc. That kind of thing. Support. Ubigo, I think about the same things. Training, maybe, and, and support. So these are some of the companies you can, you can con contact if you like. At least Sitovice and Gispo are, are present at the conference as well. Okay, well, how am I doing with time? Halfway, good. So, um, on to the semantic maps part. So, what Oscari does, it connects to different APIs, so you don't actually put the data again. You don't put it into Oscari, but you actually stream it or download it online from an API and, and create nice uh, thematic maps. This is now not a map, as you probably all know. It's a chart, but we also have nice visualizations in addition to maps, so this is a bar chart. Uh, the statistical data is obviously joined on the fly to the kind of geographical areas or, or what you have, and that means you can use the same kind of geographical data or spatial data with different kind of statistical APIs. Makes sense, right? And as I mentioned, you can visualize the data in many ways. I have later on more, more animations and slides on, on, I think, all of these except histogram. Uh, next up, another one. So it's not just a thematic map, it's dynamic, and you can kind of explore, change the visualization, change the classification, change the number of classes, etc., etc. And there's a time series tool, and you can add your own indicators if your API doesn't have your specific indicator available. Uh, I think two more animations, they're a bit longer. I'll put them running and try to explain what happens. <coughs> so this is a, uh, a uh, UN SDG indicator service, I suppose. I think behind it is... Uh, company with a kind of four-letter word in this conference, so I will not mention it, but uh, you can download the SDGs, kind of indicator data, the ones that you can actually show on a map, not all of them obviously you can show on a map, but here I open up one of them like this, fiddle around with the attributes, what I want, and slowly but steadily now I got the content or the actual data, and it's not maybe 
the nicest looking since this is the kind of polar projection. But anyway, you get the idea also here. So you have the countries there and you have the, have the semantic data on top of it and, and then colored, colored as, as the data tells you to. And also now I'm changing the visualization a bit here for it to look a bit nicer. Uh, this is the table, very basic thing. And this is the end of that animation, so that was that part. Another one, this is the time series. I think this could be the most powerful thing in the, in the thematic mapping tool because this is really, really handy in kind of seeing the development of something uh, geographically. This is the employment rate in Finland, uh, a third year time series, I think, about. And you can see kind of two economic crises quite nicely. Well, not, not a nice thing maybe, but <laughs> you can really see how it went during those economic crises, how the employment rate went down and what, what are the kind of problematic areas in, in this case in Finland. Finland and, and all the time you're seeing the classification live down, down there and you're seeing the map live there and you see the time series kind of tool or whatever that's called on top, move, it, move up or move forward. That's that. And uh, about the thematic mapping tool, we have some visions what to make better. I think there's still kind of a lot of things we could do. This is not for Oscar, but, but more for the thematic maps of Oscar. For Oscar, we have greater visions, <laughs> let's say. But this is for the thematic mapping tool. Some things we would like to make for that. Uh, I would like to, or we would like to make the thematic maps metadata driven. So if you have, would have, or if we'd have more information on the indicators, if we'd know if they are absolute values, for example, or, or not absolute, then you would know what kind of thematic maps you can actually make out of that data. Or you could recommend that you should probably use this, you should probably not use this, and etc. Uh, you could also combine statistical units on the fly if you have absolute values and you know what kind of absolute values you have. So if you have accidents on road or whatever and you have the population or area of, a, of a, the area of an area, <laughs> then you can kind of calculate densities, etc. And you could even, even make your own kind of virtual municipalities and, and calculate new statistics on that. But this requires a lot of uh, development on the kind of statistical API side, so they would also provide this metadata. Uh, something we don't have yet is a time series for users' own indicators. You can just, at the moment, you can just uh, insert one kind of year at a time, and you can't combine them as a, as a nice animation yet. Uh, unclassified dot symbols, for those who know what that means, it's like that you don't actually make classes for those dot symbols, but you just you just have them sized by the actual value of the variable. Uh, statistical data uh, on European and global level, well, that we kind of already have with the UNSDG uh, service, but maybe we don't yet, yet have, it's not in production yet, so there's still work to be done on that, that part. Mm. That was most of the things I wanted to say, but I also promised to uh, shamelessly advertise the event we're going to have in Finland. <laughs> so we have something called Inspire Helsinki 2019. Uh, it's in October. I can read from the slide. And we have nice speakers. We have some data challenges and uh, keynote presentations, etc. I think we still have space for some some participants and maybe some teams that could take part in the competition. I don't know so much about this but I have the URL there. You can go and have a look and please come there if, you, if it seems interesting. Thanks. <laughs>